Hi, I'm James Hurt and welcome to my Future Music track Deconstruction. For the past 10 years I've been fortunate enough to uh, work for Tool Room Records producing, mixing and engineering uh, probably over about 75 records and today I'm going to show you how I made my track with Tasty Lopez out on Tool Room Records called uh, Love Together. So I'm going to jump straight in. Now for the first part of any track for me, whether I'm mixing, producing, engineering, whatever, uh, the first part for me is the kick drum. In house music, that is fundamental to the groove. So the kick drum and groove section is the backbone of, of any dance track. Uh, and if the kick isn't right, I, for me, the track isn't right. So I use um, Metrum, which is a uh, VST instrument by uh, Vengeance, a part of their producer suite. And it's uh, basically a sampler and you can have three slots and put in uh, different kick drums in each slot. Now I've used each slot uh, for a different drum, a different kick drum to create a different sonic part of the kick. Uh, so this is the kick overall. Okay, it's quite deep, quite thuddy, really bassy. So the kind of body, the kind of mid of the kick is this one. Uh, then the snap of the kick is uh, something I used from Mark Knight track a while back. Uh, and then the real sub and weight of the kick comes from this sample from um, Waveform Recordings. And it's got a really, really low thuddy tone. Um, okay, and all three of them together. Now I have that set at like 0 dB. Um, I've got a trans mod on there, that's actually not doing anything. Uh, so I set everything, uh, my kick drum, at 0 dB because uh, it needs to be pretty much the loudest part of the track as far as I'm concerned. Because um, on a big club system, or on a big festival, wherever it is, you want that kick to just thunder. So I'm, I'm using MIDI uh, to trigger those three samples. Okay, and the next section is the drums. Um, kind of not too complex this time. Um, you can, you know, you can spend ages on drum program programming and uh, make them super complex and add in all kinds of quirky stuff. But uh, I, this is just a few loops. I've got the for me the key elements when making a track are the hi hat, obviously the kick, and the clap, or in this case a snare. Uh, I think I've got a clap as well. And the hi-hat that I've used is, uh, so I use Contact absolutely loads. Contact is a fantastic sampler. Um, Native Instruments, it's uh, one of the best things they do. There's so uh, many different things that you can do with it. Um, and uh, it's great for auditioning loads of different hi-hats. So I, I tried a whole bunch of ones. Um, for <laughs> But I went with the one that had the most character. Uh, I wanted to, I didn't want to just have a standard 909. I wanted something with a bit more character, something a bit more interesting. Uh, and that was from the Waveform uh, recordings. Uh, I think it was uh, Deep House that that came from. The Waveform recording sample packs are fantastic. They're really, really, really good. Um, there's tons of like drum samples from like old funk records. And there's loads and loads of character. It's got great kicks. It's got great snares. Okay, and the snare drum. Okay, waveform recordings again. I went with something that was a bit more um, live sounding and just so it's got a bit of tone in it. Okay, and then waveform recordings again. I've got another clap with a bit of pre-shift on. And notice that the clap sits just before uh, the kick as well which is a kind of thing in, in disco, a lot of disco records, the claps were sh pre-shifted and it gives the track a bit of a groove. And you notice if I get rid of that pre-shift, it sounds, it sounds okay, but it just a little less funky. And that for me is really important in the groove section is to get um, get the kick and the clap and snare and hi-hat all grooving together. Uh, 
Okay, I've got the snare pushing here as well. That's on a groove. Uh, Cubase you set to percentage of groove. Uh, I think Logic has like uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, but in Cubase it's uh, you do it by percentage and you can customize that. Um, and that's just adding a little bit of a skip as well. Okay, and next. And that's providing another fill uh, at the end of every four bars, just to keep it really, really interesting. Because um, there's nothing worse than just kind of a track sounding like a loop. I mean, and you really know that it's just cut and paste. So I try and vary the drums a little bit every every one, two, four, eight, sixteen bars. Just make small, subtle changes. And the next loop I've got, uh, the next bit of percussion is a uh, is a funk loop. This is off a uh, 70s record. It's like a cowbell that I, I kind of sampled. Okay, it's super quiet. It's not doing a huge amount. Uh, I've got a side chain on it. Uh, stereo widener as well. This is really, really useful. So um, the Wave Super Tap is a fantastic plugin if you want to make things like wide. Uh, without them, um, without them disappearing in the mix, because like sometimes when you widen things, like a, a widener plugin, um, it will uh, it will just basically turn up the side information, the stereo information that uh, doesn't exist in the mono world. Uh, and then what I tend to do is when you use this wave super tap, it creates. Uh, one uh, one of the signals, the mono signal, it puts in the center. Uh, then it duplicates the sound, pans it to the left and pans it to the right, and then you delay uh, delay one of them by a few milliseconds, and then it creates like a pseudo stereo effect. So your brain thinks that the sound is super wide, um, but you've just kind of panned it left and right and delayed it slightly. I've also pitch shifted it as well. It's really important with um, with anything that's got any kind of uh, tonal information. So things like cowbells, uh, percussion, like even snare drums. Sometimes uh, just be wary that anything that is uh, that has any sort of tonal melody to it, even if it's in the drums, uh, it helps to put that in the key of the track. And once you start tuning percussion, uh, start tuning things like cowbells um, and any of the kind of bell sounds. Uh, it really, really makes the track sound a bit more cohesive and nicer on the ears uh, by putting that in tune. Because, you know, drummers would tune their drum kit, uh, you know, bongo player would, would tune their bongos to the key of the song when they can. Um, and I think that's, like, really important uh, to do that if you want to create a, a, a kind of nicer sonic picture on the ears. Okay, so there's the bongo loop. Um bongo sort of 70s bongo is always great you know from uh funk records so these are these are samples of of bongos that i've kind of chopped up and rearranged um they sound fantastic and once again i've uh, pitched them down a couple of semitones uh to fit the key of the track added the decapitator put those on on bongos i think a bit of distortion on congas and bongo drums sound fantastic um that it just it really brings out the harmonics it gives them a bit of an edge it makes them really sit uh there in the mix um i've also shaved off some of the harsh transients uh, of the top end of uh these are probably quite quiet and not that audible but i'll show you this is the very high end of the bongo loop soloed okay so the information you're hearing there that's that's what i've taken out of the bongo loop And that's just the basic uh, multi-band envelope shaper that comes with Cubase. Really, really useful. Uh, bongos as well when you're mixing them. Always good to use uh, a bit of reverb. Uh, I just bongos sound a bit nicer with a bit of reverb. Makes them sound more live. You know, they're live instruments, so uh, yeah, so it's live percussion. So just adding a bit of room to them uh, can make them sound less dry and make them sound a bit more kind of live and a bit more in your face. Um, okay, and the next layer. I think something like this uh, is just kind of is is fundamental to uh, to any track. Just a hat, a hat, and a really light hat and a clap. That just underpins the groove and accents the open hi hat and the snare and the clap.
And on top of that, I've got a couple of other loops. I've got some kind of 16th percussion. Once again, waveform recordings, fantastic stuff there. And then that kind of loop, which is, I don't know, it, it's like a kind of shakery, some noise percussion, but that, that makes, makes the groove just swing a little bit more and pushes it along. Okay, so that's fundamentally the groove section. Um, I do edit on the kick every uh, every so often. You know, it's like kind of every eight, four, eight bars. There's a just to keep it interesting. Um, drum fills as well. There's some really, really, really good um, samples from uh, Oliver Sample Pack. Uh, incredible disco and funk stuff. That's a couple of their snares. Really, really hard edge snare sounds really good for new disco anything anything that you need a real groove for um but want it to sound you know super modern and punchy i recommend the oliver sample packs are really really good and uh, clap just sort of live clap in the breakdown i read somewhere that if you put live claps in tracks actual kind of you know much more live organic sounding uh, claps then it kind of takes people back to like a place like church or school or like being in an audience or you know anywhere where you've had to kind of clap and so you know lots of people clapping together it makes people feel makes people want to clap and it, it taps into something so yeah breakdowns that sort of uh, live clap sound I think always works and it's good to have little things like that little kind of live organic things in the track to make them uh, give them a bit more appeal so they don't sound so monotonous and um, especially the more housey you go i think things tend to sound a bit more live and a bit more organic um okay so that's the groove section okay so the next section is the bass uh after you've mixed the kick and and got the groove section going uh the bass is the next important thing i always think um without the bass uh it's not gonna rumble on a club system and you know that's going to keep the whole track moving and the bass is you know the kick and the bass are just the absolute like fundamental part of the groove so i've got the bass i divide it into two sections this time um, i'm using a sample so i'm using like uh, i've split the sample over two octaves so here's the sub octave which is everything below about 100 hertz Okay, so that's the super low rumble. That's what's called the sub bass. Uh, I'm uh, filtering it, so I'm literally only letting through uh, frequencies between about 20 and 100 hertz. I'm also side chaining that on the groove as well with the Vengeance side chain. Um, and actually also on the bass group I've got uh, a frequency cut I'm taking away uh, the side all the side information for everything below about 50 Hertz doesn't make a huge amount of difference but uh, because I'm using samples there's a bit of sort of stray stereo information uh, on the recording and you know you generally don't want basses being too stereo not in the subs anyway because uh, they can wreak havoc on a club system and it kind of loses takes focus away from the kick really and you end up l losing bass when you start to put stuff in stereo um it, it done right you can make basses stereo and interesting like a lot of prog stuff has really stereo basses these days but uh, generally the sub should be kept kind of mono if you can um so yeah this is the, that's the sub bass and I've pitch shifted that down uh, by uh, nine semitones. Um, it's a sample, so I've just put that in key with everything else. Um, I'm using R bass on it as well. Not doing a huge amount, but it's just adding a little more weight. Uh, R bass adds a bit of a kind of frequency spike or something. I'm not quite sure what it does, but it, it seems to add a bit more weight to anything you put it on. Um, and it can really be like an overload if you use it too much. So lightly using a bit of the R bass at 80 hertz. Uh, 80 hertz is a bit of a magic frequency when it comes to basses. If you just uh, boost a little bit there, not on every bass, but on a lot of basses, when you boost around 80, it gives it a bit more thickness, a bit more body. Um, but And you can go, you know, a few hertz either side of that, but it's that sort of general area. Uh, and then I've got the bass, the high bass. So that's the same bass again, but uh, pitched up three semitones to be in the key with the track, and that's providing the kind of higher part of the of the track. 
and as you can see on uh, on the on the EQ display that that's resonating uh, kind of between 100 and 200 which is that's the bit that you kind of hear that's the bit you would define more as the baseline that you'd hear it that's what you'd hear on a laptop on a phone or kind of smaller speakers uh, whereas the Saab is really sort of designed for club systems and whereas this kind of uh, 100 to 200 hertz is a bit more of the kind of is the, the body of the bass really Okay, and then that's just the sample, so um, it sounds great, it's got loads of character, loads of extra harmonics that you wouldn't normally get from just a kind of synth bass, so then I've replayed that uh, with a uh, mini Moog. And that's just using a saw lead, so that's doing the high part again. And it's kind of roughly the same, it's as close as, then I'm doing the sub bass. which is super low. I'm monitoring at quite low levels at the minute and you can barely hear that. But once again, in the club, that kind of really low rumble will do a lot of damage and it will sound really, really cool. And actually for the uh, for the sub bass as well, I used a slightly different tone. Um, I used uh, what is a, a, a rectangle, like... Um, so that would be like a pulse wave, really, sort of a narrow rectangle. It's not quite, uh, not quite a square wave. Um, and I've used that for the the sub subs can be quite good if with a bit more of a pure tone. So uh, like a saw wave for me uh, in a bass is really good for the top part of a bass. And uh, like the sub uh, can be like a square uh, or a sine or um, or a pulse or something like that. But I find like uh, saws have a bit more presence. Um, in them and they sound really really good for like that kind of all those higher frequencies um, and you can see up here actually on my screen that I've got I, I always monitor everything with uh, the Pro Q3 running um, just so I can get a kind of uh, a picture of, of what the uh, what the harmonics of any sound are and you can see um, uh, as this is as this is running you can see all those kind of frequency spikes there um, so that and that's a saw wave and that's got you know the sort of quite close together and that's a nice even spread um, and that's doing that kind of upper part of the bass and then you can see our pulse wave here which is far more growly and doing the really really low end um, possibly even a bit too much of the low end uh, but I, I kind of pushed this as far as I possibly could um, to really really fill out that that low frequency so yeah that's the kind of two parts of the bass uh, I covered there um, usual side chain on everything make them kind of mono uh, and then that grooves along really well with the kick Okay, um, now, the main bit, the bit, the theme really of the whole track, um, there's there's a couple of kind of like uh, um, melodic parts here really. So uh, first of all, there's the guitars that are kind of going in the background. Okay, they're filtering up, let's move it over. Okay, so that's just uh, some guitars from uh, what have we got? Some waveforms, recordings, house guitars. Once again, sample pack. I've used so many of these waveform recording samples over the years. They're just really good, really interesting, really good for house stuff. They're quite sort of live, organic sounding. Okay, and I've got a few effects on this. I've got meta filter. That's actually providing a bit of bit crush uh, on the on the guitars. Not a huge amount, but you can look when you see uh, what it's doing to the actual waveform. Well, if I turn it off, and you notice there's not a lot of information um, in the uh, in the very very high end. And when you add some bit brush, it starts to come alive at the really high frequencies. Now you don't really hear that, but you feel it, and it adds a little bit more bite and a little bit more presence to the guitar. So uh, the bit crusher, uh, um, great, great plugin to use when you subtly. And the Waves Meta Filter has got a fantastic uh, crush on it. It just it feels just right for this kind of disco-y sampled guitar stuff. Um, another one of my favourite plugins is the Sound Toys Echo Boy. 
absolutely brilliant uh, sort of analog delay. This is a really, really short kind of slapback delay, I guess, um, with a feedback of zero and or like the minimum on here and then a small amount of mix um, and a really short echo time. And that's just making it a bit stereo. Once again, quite subtle, but that's just adding a really short stereo delay uh, to give it a bit more presence, make it sound a bit more live. And then, of course, sidechain. Absolutely, sidechain on everything, um, especially when the kick's in. Okay, and then the main theme. So uh, this killer loop, this was uh, something that I found. I uh, found uh, a kind of live... Uh, version of a record like uh, being played by this funk band and uh, I kind of chopped it up and re-edited it, re it to create something new then I got it recreated and replayed and then I removed the drums from it uh, and ended up with this <laughs> Okay, and as you can hear, um, so I've got quite a bit of processing on it, so I've got the multi-band envelope shaper again. That's just taking off all the attacks of anything. Uh, then the uh, super tap, the waves uh, super tap 2. So once again, that takes a signal, puts one in the middle, uh, takes the signal, copies it, pans one to the left and then one to the right and delays one of them. I've actually delayed the left and the right, so you've got one in the middle, one delayed on the left and one delayed on the right. Uh, and that creates a really, really sort of wide, uh, uh, yeah, a real sort of wide sound uh, with whatever you put it on. Um, and it's great. If you just want to make stuff really stand out and fill the room, then this is great. You be careful because it can phase as well when you've got uh, you know, two sounds the same playing at the same time and slightly delayed, that's how you get like a phase or a chorus effect. So it can do that, but with this it didn't seem to matter too much. It it just, you know, it, it helped it sound lively and didn't change it too much. Taking off uh, taking off any of the low end as well, Fab Filter Pro Q, it's Pro Q2. Actually, uh, I use Pro Q3 now normally. Just to make it fit in the track. Now, when you have a main theme like this or a kind of main bit of music, it's always important to realise like where uh, where this starts and where the kind of where the bass ends. And as you can see, I've actually cut it at about 200, 1 to 200 hertz because that's kind of where the bass takes over. And I didn't want those two interfering. I wanted this bit to sit in its own kind of space um, and not interfere with anything else. And that's, uh, so that's just from a mixing point of view, that's just trying to fix it, uh, sit it in the track so it sits around and grooves with the bass nicely. <laughs> And I've automated uh, a few things on that track. So in the breakdowns, sidechain comes off and it filters down using the fab filter. So it's fab filter, filtering up with the sidechain off in the breakdown. Always a really, really good way to build tension. I've also got um, Valhalla Vintage Verb. Great plugin. Uh, really, really spacious, makes everything sound like it's in a church. I mean, if you just want to add some real depth and space and make it sound like it's super echoey, then Valhalla Vintage Verb. Uh, another thing as well that I use uh, quite a lot to build sounds is the uh, Quick Quack Fusion Field. Uh, excellent, excellent plugin. Uh, it's just reverb and it kind of sounds a bit like white noise when you turn it up. So uh, you'll hear what I mean. <laughs> So it adds like loads and loads of tension and atmosphere uh, and I tend to put that on a lot of things to try and build them, kind of space them out, gets wider and wider, more airy, kind of more noisy and then zoom, comes back in uh, and that really, really kind of creates a bit of atmosphere, great for build ups. Uh, I actually also do this on the master, so I send most things in the track like the groove elements, the bass and the guitars, the, the kind of melodic parts, they all go to a, a master effects channel. 
and for the breakdowns i will turn up uh turn up the the game of the fu- uh, fusion field <laughs> You'll also notice as well, uh, at just before the end of the breakdown, that'll tend to turn down the um, the master volume as well. That helps. That really helps to build. Um, trying to get breakdowns right is is it's taken me a while to work this one out. But I think the main thing is just make sure whatever happens at the end of the breakdown isn't as big as what happens after the breakdown. And um, so yeah, I turn the volume down, reverb it out. I also on the master, I'll. Uh, take uh, take out some of the bottom end and it just helps to reduce it change this kind of sonic picture so there's a real contrast when it snaps back in uh, with that absolutely yeah with, with a banging groove okay now the next bit is the vocals the vocals are uh, for me, that's it's. This track is all about those vocals. This was written at a time when I think the world was a bit crazy. Well, it kind of still is. And uh, my good friend Tasty Lopez came up with this amazing, uh, amazing bit of vocal. Let music take you to a higher place. Heal yourself. And you can see what I've done. I've added sausage fattener. If you haven't used sausage fattener before, use sausage fattener because it's great. It just makes stuff sound more present, more alive, more, more, a uh, bit brighter, a bit more distorted, adds more harmonic information. Uh, don't use too much because uh, too much sausage fattener can just kill things. It, it totally can destroy a sound. But it's it's an amazing plugin because it just makes everything sound a little bit more exciting. So use it with caution, but, you know, go for it. Forgive those who have hurt you. And no, you don't need to forget. So when you're good and ready... And next after Sausage Fatner, well, before Sausage Fatner, I've got the Little Alter Boy. This is a fantastic plugin uh, from Sound Toys. These guys make some incredible um, plugins. Really, really good stuff. I would say Little Alter Boy is probably like industry standard when it comes to um, comes to kind of manipulating vocals, especially with the format shift. This is the kind of real, uh, the, the coolest thing about it. So I, I'll play it to you without with this off. Let music take you to a higher place. Heal yourself. Sounds great. Loads of character, loads of vibe and energy. But then this is what happens when you shift the format. Let music take you to a higher place. Heal yourself. Suddenly it's got even more belt and even more character and it just sounds kind of more modern. It sounds interesting. It kind of sounds... uh, like a little less female moves it more towards the male sound as well so it's kind of it just it it does things with your ears you're like oh what is this it's it makes it a bit more interesting and a bit more quirky um so yeah that's so that's uh, the vocal i've also got uh, a huge kind of vocal plug-in chain that i use as well on here start off with the deesser um I love using DSs as compressors. Uh, this is uh, this is actually using a DSer to compress the low end. Let music take you to a higher place. Heal yourself. Forgive those who. So that's actually squashing everything below about two two and a half k. Um, I just find that when you kind of compress that low end and then put more compressors on top, it just kind of really makes the vocal punch and stand out. CLA, Wave CLA, uh, fantastic plugin. Chris uh, Chris Lord Alg, uh, or however you say it, CLA, absolutely brilliant. Uh, compression on push on max. Let music take you to a higher place. Heal yourself. It just seems to really bring it out in the mix and it makes it really up front. JJP, the Jack Joseph Pug, uh, th- this vocal plugin. I use this on loads of stuff. You can use it on guitars. You can use it on, you know, drums. You can, I don't know. It just seems to, it seems to really compress things and add loads of high end and add in all this other trickery and um, it brings loads of like body out in the vocals and makes them really, really kind of cut. And uh, yeah, so I, I, I know I, I recommend using this. It's it's kind of you can't really use it lightly it seems to be one of those things that just either 
it has one hell of a whack or it's not on at all. So I, I, if I want to make vocals, you know, really stand out, I'll put this on top as well. And it just really works. Let music take you to a higher place. Okay, then a ds -er again. Heal yourself. Often find around 2 to 5k you can get some harsh frequencies. So we've already kind of used the de on the low end. Now this is specifically taking out, uh, reducing the level of, of a band of frequencies that can be a bit essy and sibilant in vocals. Uh, super, super useful using these de -essers. Forgive those who have... Uh, another one is the Sonox um, uh, suppressor, which does a similar kind of thing. These, these are just kind of stock plugins that come with Cubase. Um, and then again, I've got the uh, um, Sound Toys Echo Boy. Really, really good plugin. You have hurt you. And no, you don't need to forget. Makes it sound that a little bit more stereo. Once again, subtle. It's kind of a whole lot of subtle different things. It gives it a bit more space. It makes it sound. It's like a kind of short slapback delay again. Uh, taken Now I've cut off some of the low end. Yeah. So when you're good and ready, then you can find somebody. And that for me just helps it fit in the mix a little bit better. Um, helps that top end of the vocal really come through. Okay, now this dub station, fantastic plugin. Dub station like 1.5, they don't make it anymore, and the company that make it won't even send you a version of it. They don't support it or anything. This was the best one. Don't use number two because this is just way better. Let music take you to a higher place. It's probably the closest thing I've ever found to like a real character kind of or a dub delay like it says dub station. Um, it distorts it a bit. It's got kind of quite harsh EQs on it. So it really just, it's a kind of delay with lots of character and I haven't really found anything else that's come close yet. So if you ever manage to track down a copy of that, then I would uh, I would use it and I would keep it and try and keep it for as long as you can because that's super, super useful. Then I've got uh, the Echo Boy again doing a stereo delay, 1-8 dotted. Um, Let music take you to a high up! Yeah, just adding a bit more delay, kind of interesting delays. I like things to be sort of have uh, on slightly unusual time. So there's the dub station delay, which is at uh, a quarter note and then uh, a dotted eighth note for the stereo one as well. And that just gives it kind of loads of bouncing around and really interesting effect. Uh, Valhalla Vintage Verb again. Place. Heal yourself. For great for making it sound like she's really you know like she's standing in a church giving a sermon like she's you know belting it from the top of a hill just gives it loads and loads of space space uh next day in line um no you don't need to forget another filter uh that's just kind of not really doing a lot that's just trying to pick up anything that shouldn't be there let music take you to a higher place any artifacts that you get from all those other plugins i'm using fab filters to take off that very low end um, once again, multi bands, envelope shaper, subtle, but with vocals, once you start to, uh, like put loads of compression and loads of like, uh, high end and EQ and stuff on them, you, you do start to get all these pops and clicks and little like, um, you know, like stuff that you get from, you know, from the, the human voice that just comes through naturally. And unfortunately, when you put loads of compressors and effects and distortion on stuff, they really, really come out and they can be quite audible. So just using uh, this envelope shaper to take out the attack of any information that's kind of above 5K will really help to reduce that. So it's one of those things you kind of... Um, if you if you ever hear like a, a record uh, or track and you know you hear in the vocals any clicks or pops it's gonna it's gonna take those out basically and make it sound just a bit smoother on the ears and give everything else a bit more room to have hurt you and no, you don't need to forget so when you're good and ready then you can find some okay so uh, the next part of the vocal as well is um, is the main loop and this is the kind of magic of the of the track and this was all started out as just a, a, a kind of one bar two bar loop and this one little bit of vocal looping around we gotta get this big together 
Okay, so that uh, together, that's on a separate uh, group as well, or separate bus. Uh, as you can see with the lead vocal, um, it's got a similar kind of set of um, set of effects. Basically, it's kind of it's not too dissimilar, um, except this time I've got the crystallizer. Together, together, and I've got the side chain on it, which is together, 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 to make it pump with the kick. Um, okay, so that's uh, yeah, so that's the bulk of it. But the crystallizer, which is uh, one of the, my favourite creative delay plugins you could ever imagine, it just does some really cool stuff. Um, it basically delays it and reverses it and can pitch it if you like. Together, 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 together. And that's just automating, as you can see here. That's kind of just getting more and more uh, regeneration and more and more mix. Um, it really, really helps to build. So yeah, I think uh, one of the things I really like to do, and a lot of the records I've done for Tool Room over the years, is using delays and reverbs to kind of build the tension. Um, rather than kind of changing the part, just using effects to kind of make them sound more interesting and, uh, and really kind of build that excitement. And it's also got a pitch, pitch function on here as well, which is super, super useful. Um, I'll show you, give you a little demo. Together, 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 together. And as you can hear, that just goes up and up and up and does all these kind of cra crazy, weird chipmunky voices. And... Um, and yeah, and you can have a lot of fun with that. I like here a lot of vocal production these days is done with these like sound toys things with like the crystallizer or the little altar boy to kind of change the format. Um, so yeah, absolutely recommend using those. Okay, so the next section, that's kind of the vocals. Oh, there's one more bit. There's the laugh here, um, which is just uh, it's a kind of splash effect. Always good in like tracks. If it's a vocal track, rather than just having the vocal in one place and one place only, it's good to kind of intro the vocal a little bit with, um, you know, so it could be breath noises, it could be reverse reverbs, could be a laugh, could be a bit of the hook of the chorus or something, just so you know it's a vocal track. Um, and I think that helps kind of introduce that sound rather than just bringing it in out of nowhere. <laughs> So that's Dub Station, Sausage Fatner, and the Little Alter Boy again, all going to the main uh, lead group. Okay, so that's the, the groove section, the bass, uh, the vocals, and all the melodics. Uh, it's kind of quite a simple record, really. Um, I spent a lot of time just kind of working on the individual parts to make sure that I was choosing the right, the right elements. Um, but the, the kind of next bit, which is the production, really, for me, this is the what gives it the real kind of interesting uh, ca character. You know, all the sounds and things that I've used, they're, they're not, you know, they're not incredibly different from anything else that's out there. But uh, all this stuff like crowd noise. You know, you could use like white noise, vinyl crackle, anything atmospheric just to add a bit of space and a bit of texture. And, you know, if you hear that in a club or you hear that at a festival or something and you hear like people cheering, people are crowd noise, it makes people just start to clap and whistle and it just adds a bit of atmosphere. It makes it sound more exciting. Um, also like a high string. Okay, really, really useful. Like... I don't know, so many dance records use that high string, really, really high octave. Uh, make sure it's the right note for the key of the song. Um, but, you know, it's a kind of 90s house thing, and uh, I think it adds a bit of tension. It just adds a new frequency and just changes uh, the, the sonics of the record the, while it's in. And it just makes your ears prick up and makes you feel like something new is happening. Um, so you can hear that happening in uh, towards the breakdown. Kill yourself! Okay, and also some effects. Love the purple disco machine sample back. Let's go spend some money on it. It's great. There's just so much stuff in there. Uh, that, the Oliver um, sample pack and the waveform recordings, uh, as well as the Mark Knight uh, and a lot of the Tool Room sample packs are absolute genius. There's some really good stuff in there. Stereo 909, really, really good to accent uh, transitions. <laughs> 
909 oh, no because there's a lot of reverb delays and stuff so i put some reverb and delay on the on the craft symbol just always good to do these things just little bits of production like that to uh, just make it sound a bit more live a bit more interesting so uh it doesn't just sound like a loop and you know it makes the effect last a bit longer um also another sample from the oliver sample pack okay that's just uh, like a disco string stab really good that makes it sound super a bit more disco-y i guess risers always good like every 16 or what am i every 16 every eight to have like have a riser <laughs> Whoosh, this whoosh has been on, well, uh, hundreds and hundreds of tracks. Um, it's just such a useful tool. It's fantastic for, for like, uh, building tension uh, at the end of breakdowns. That combined with the snare roll. Because you know we got to come all together. together. Okay, uh, I've also got, as well as the snare roll, that's... Uh, I think it's like a Lin or a 727. What have we got here? Yeah, it's a Lin, Lin snare drum. So that's from a, like a, a drum machine sample pack. Yeah, really, really good that. It's just a bit different from a nine, the standard 909, but 909s also work really, really well. Uh, running a 16th pattern through contact and just volume, voluming up. Shut up also do a clap, uh, some claps at the end of, of uh, the breakdowns using the pan man to make the claps. So that's a, a pan uh, a pan effect basically and it will pan it left or right or and it can do kind of any combination of left or right. It sounds simple, but it's it's a bit more complex than that. Every time it detects an input, it will change the stereo placement. So it can make stuff kind of move around and give it loads of space. Um, and it works really well on things like claps and snares and kind of percussion if you want them to really kind of uh, throw between the two speakers. And then Fusion Field again. I've used that particular reverb because it uh, adds a lot of kind of noise onto um, uh, and a lot of character onto the sound as well. And with something like a clap that's like an effect like that or drum fill, you know, you don't want the reverb to be subtle. You want it to be really in your face. If I wanted something more subtle, I'll go with a Valhalla. Okay, and these risers I've made stacks and stacks of these risers for such a long time now for all the sample packs I've made um, and I love putting them in tracks it just adds excitement uh, I've used uh, the silent silent great plugin I mean this is one I've had in my my toolbox for so many years now and it's just simply uh, uh, a saw lead um, just a saw lead uh, going up in pitch really really simple but once you start putting like reverb and effects, a sausage fattener, uh, it really starts to have more character. So the Echo Boy as well. And the Valhalla Vintage. I'm also taking off notice that I'm removing all that kind of low end there that just isn't needed with something like this. So I don't want anything to get in the way of the kick and the bass. So I've done like a massive frequency cut at like 500. Uh, to 200 just to get rid of all that low end noise that's probably coming some off the sausage fattener and some just off the off the uh, signal in general okay some other cool stuff you can do with silent really really good fun playing around with the LFOs and uh, assigning the LFO to uh, the pitch and the cutoff, and then just manipulating those. <laughs> yeah, really, it's quite simple, but it's just playing around, having some fun with all of these dials, and just so the sound constantly change, kind of like uh, emulating a, a like a dub siren that you'd get. Um, in like in dancehall reggae that kind of music um, 
it's like i i think that's where that sound really originated with these like tiny little boxes that had uh that had like a, a saw wave or a pulse wave or something like that and you could just manipulate it it's assign it would have that lfo assigned to the pitch and it could make it all crazy stuff like that and it's like super fun and it just sounds so cool and with delays um and side chain it really really makes the track come alive and i've also got chopper which is like basically a gate and that's just uh chopping it uh chopping the volume uh, like a uh, uh, triplets um, just to add a bit more rhythm at the end there okay so the breakdown uh, I've kind of covered a bit of that earlier um, always good to uh, at the end of kind of these sections is to do a bit of a high pass so I've probably done that on yeah here we are so on the master um, and on the drums Everything's kind of high passed and low passed a little bit as well. <laughs> so just bringing the energy downloads. Um, sometimes I will uh, I will turn the the kind of master down a little bit as well. Um, I haven't done that till the very end, but I've done that on the the master group, and I've also actually done that on the main stereo out at the very end. There you've got um, the volume just kind of being uh, being dropped. Once again, to give like way more impact when it all kicks in. So, folk, yeah. so when you're good and ready, then you can find somebody and show them that kill of people of love, baby. Cause you know it. We gotta get this thing pumped all together. 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 Okay, and uh, uh, like a crash roll, you know, you can have snare rolls, clap rolls. So I've got the snares doing 16th on the field. Got the claps doing the kind of pattern here, which are instantly Andre Crom sample pack, another great sample pack, really, really, really useful. Um, they have some amazing snares, claps, and hats in that uh, Andre Crom sample pack, so I definitely recommend it. Um, so that combined with the uh, Lin snare, Lin drums, kind of, I'm going to go maybe 80s drum machine. Um, Andre Krom reverse effects. Uh, so the snare rolls. With just a bit of delay and reverb on them again. And the white noise. I mean, wouldn't be a tech house record without white noise, would it? And white noise on the one with sidechain. That's from the Dave Parkinson sample pack. It's just so much of this stuff is from sample packs and that I've kind of accumulated over the years and uh, and it's just it's amazingly useful to have um, have like certain tools but like just some kind of subtle white noise like that it just fills out the, the frequency um, the spectrum of frequencies and you know white noise if you if you look at it on a screen you can see that uh, I could take this away you can see that it kind of occupies most frequencies um, most audible frequencies so you're just kind of adding adding that all in when it kicks in uh, suddenly goes from having like no frequencies to all the frequencies we gotta get this thing all together, together, together. it makes it sound thicker it makes the hi-hat sound thicker it makes the drum sound thicker white noise is is like fundamental um, and used in the right way it can make stuff sound really 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 big um, I've also d taken away the crowd noise when the white noise comes in because when the crowd when the white noise disappears after like eight bars you kind of there's a bit of a gap sonically so I've filled that with the ride symbol and uh, yeah so the ride symbol is just a kind of uh, from the copyright defected sample pack um, that's just like a 909 uh, pitch down Just one semitone. I find stuff when you when you start pitching things down, they've got a, a lot more sonic characteristic. Like they sound a lot more interesting and weird, and they just sound unusual. So, just pitching stuff and moving them around, they start to do strange things, and they they start to sound a bit unnatural and a bit more gritty. And uh, it can work with pitching stuff up as well. But it's just you're changing 
the the sonic content of it and the harmonic content um, into something that's a bit more unusual and you're kind of using the the digital artifacts that you get with uh, pitch shifting to your advantage to actually create something more of a new original sound um, and I find that like super super useful just to try and make stuff sound different and more interesting um, okay and on the drum bus um, this is this is what everybody always wants to know is you know what do you do to your drums uh, not a lot this this time I've used the uh, the SSL uh, compressor <laughs> So that's just adding a bit of gain and a little bit of compression. I'm using it to actually bring out the attacks of the drums and just kind of glue it all together a little bit. That's uh, really useful. The SSL, uh, I think it's like a bus comp compressor. Uh, yeah, G Master bus compressor. Um, is uh, it the, it's the Waves one as well, not the UAD one. That's really, really useful for putting on drums. Um, you've got to kind of play around with the settings a bit. Uh, you can see here the settings that I've got. But uh, basically, I'm just kind of using it lightly to let the, the attacks of the drums come through and then to push everything down a little bit more. And it's got a real, it, it feels a bit more kind of natural, I guess. Um, I don't really know how else to put it, but it kind of, it makes stuff kind of, it glues it together without sounding too harsh or, um, or ruining the sound too much. And it just kind of brings it out. You can, you know, add a bit of gain to it and it doesn't distort, which is nice. So I'll use, on the end of my uh, drum bus, I'll be using um, this uh, Sonox Inflator. Again, I, I tend to use this quite a bit on groups and buses. It's like really, really useful for clipping the signal. It's a digital clipper. So uh, rather than compressing it, what it does is it, it chops the... Uh, Every time uh, the audio kind of goes over the threshold, which is like like it's a zero dB in this case, so the the spikes of the audio kind of hit that, they get cut off. Or, you know, normal waveform would be like that. This is the threshold, hits there, it cuts it off. So and it kind of turns it into distortion. So it it still it still gets loud uh, and it doesn't compress it, but it stops it. Uh, it stops it kind of going over a certain loudness or a certain volume. It's, um, I mean, that's kind of my understanding of it. It makes it, it makes it louder, but without it distorting. And the distortion that you do get is a kind of nicer harmonic distortion that's, that's better on your ears. That's a better way of saying it. So I know as well that my drum bus there, this is post fader as well, that my drum bus is going to be set at... Uh, it's minus 0 0.3. Um, that's simply because... Uh, minus 0 0.3 allows for any kind of um, inter-sample peaking, which is like a whole other thing. Uh, that just means that if it's um, kind of when it gets converted to a kind of a lower bit rate, uh, you know, MP3, something like that, uh, you're likely to get less distortion. But I know that all, all my groups will be at minus 0 0.3 or 0 pretty much uh, with, with that on. Um, the bass as well on my bass bus... Um, something I didn't mention earlier, which is the uh, the WLM, which is another Waves plugin. I've got so many Waves plugins. They're great. Well, actually, I've got a few, but the ones I do use are just, you know, I couldn't live without them. So this is like some kind of mastering plugin or something, but it's really good. When you turn on the True Peak limiter, it uh, limits it at like uh, minus, two, uh, minus 2 dB. And uh, if I put that post fader, I know that my bass is never going to go above like minus two dB. Um, the difference with this one is that you don't really get much distortion. I don't know why a lot of compressors, when you on limiters and things, they distort. So I tend not to use compressors and limiters where I can. But this one's great for the bass bus because it just anything that goes, it hits and it turns it down and it doesn't seem to distort. And I, I don't know, I've been through hundreds of compressors and limiters but they they when you put them on bases they distort okay and uh, on the melodics bus as well so i have h comp i mean it's it's kind of basic really once again this is a compressor but i'm using it as a limiter uh, and this is making sure anything over uh, 0 db it's post fader uh, it gets 
gets turned down basically so it's a kind of it's a soft compressor limiter. and actually it's not even doing anything so that's just kind of in case there's something that's a bit loud that might go over zero db it'll just turn it down a bit uh, not actually being used in this track so that, that's kind of irrelevant but always good to have like something at the end of every bus um just to stop just to take the kind of uh, the kind of rogue frequencies or, or the rogue like transient spikes out of out of the mix because uh, these sort of you know you suddenly get you know four or five from different buses all peaking at the same time it creates distortion and if you've got all those under control it's much kind of smoother and more even um, yeah and then I guess production wise look, on, on my master master effects it's just every 8 or 16 I'm, I'm taking up the uh, the uh, high pass filter kind of like what you would if you were DJing just on a mixer you'd you know take away the bass frequencies and then put them back in it's just you know useful to do this yeah do this before you introduce a new sound um, in this case it's kind of to introduce the kick in the very beginning as well um, Yeah, you can hear that's just it starts off high past, and um, yeah, and uh, then introduces the kick by bringing that back in. Okay, so in the breakdown, um, there's a much uh, longer riser, um, or rider riser. So it's the same thing again. It's just a saw lead, just pitching up. Now. A cool thing that I like to do sometimes with these is if you add a ring mod. So that ring mod or... It starts to create a bit more... You start to get more frequencies rising. And it starts to do this weird thing where as like some frequencies go up, some frequencies go down. So if you want a bit more character in a, in a riser, um, when it's just something really simple, like definitely have a look at using a ring mod. It just it creates all this extra harmonic content and makes it sound super interesting. Okay, so the last thing. Um, is uh, just the arrangement, overall arrangement, kind of standard club stuff, really, you know, like a minute uh, before the bass line comes in, uh, kick high past for, um, for like 30 seconds. So always good, like if you're making stuff for DJs, like make it DJ friendly, it's more likely to get played. Uh, you know, intro without the kick. Kick comes in at 30 seconds and then at a minute the bass. Using those uh, effects and splashes and crashes to kind of accent uh, like key moments. Uh, and then uh, uh, this is like 49, which is like a minute and a half, I think. Uh, that's when my first breakdown comes. <laughs> okay, and then like breakdown of 30 seconds. And then this grooves along like for about uh, like 24 bars. I think that's uh, roughly, um, yeah. Then goes into the, uh, the like the siren section. There's a kind of little bridge, like a shoulder between the main kind of chorus, which is together, together, and uh, and then the breakdown. <laughs> And then the second breakdown, twice as long as the first breakdown. This is where all the bells and whistles, all the tension comes in. Building to a peak with all the layers coming in one by one by one uh, till you get the final explosion and the peak of the song where you know, everything but the kitchen sink is just thrown in to like, create a real, like, a real like, boom. Okay, and that should be the bit where everyone goes wild and that is like confetti cannons, like smoke machine, lasers, everything goes crazy. Um, okay, that'll go for like 16 bars uh, after eight, bring in the ride symbol. Bring 
bring the dub siren back in. I always think that's a good thing to do. Um, you know, if you used to lay it earlier on, may as well stick in at the end as well, because that's where everything's happening. And then the mix out, which is once again like 16 of the bass, the drums, uh, with the kind of the, the main like theme, the main melodic elements, just all kind of filtering out. And then for the last 30 seconds, it's just like kick and uh, drums. Love, baby. Makes it easy to mix out, makes it easy to play in a club. Um, and there you have it. So that was uh, my future music uh, track deconstruction. Um, thanks very much for uh, having me. I hope that's been enjoyable. Um, the track's called Love Together. Uh, the artist is myself, James Hearn, Tasty Lopez. It's out on Tool Room. Uh, if you have any, any questions or anything, please hit me up on social media uh, at James Hearn. Always happy to answer any production questions you might have. Uh, arrangement, mixing, production, writing, whatever. Um, I'm all ears. Anyway. Have a great day and thank you very much.